Hello everyone and welcome to another part in the Aurora Forex tutorial series that I'm making. I believe this is part number 4 and today we are going to deal with passive sensors, both EM and thermal. As a bonus, we are also going to look a bit on the deep space tracking stations uh, because some of you were asking about that. So yeah, uh, what are passive sensors? Passive sensors would be best described probably as sensors that do not themselves send any kind of data outside of your ship. I always imagine them as numerous small microchips around the hull of your ship that collects the data that are coming to it from space. The thermal sensors collect thermal signatures and EM sensors collect EM signatures. Each of these are specific, can have different heights, and you can find your EM and thermal signature on respective screens of every ship, colony, and other installations. So, now that you understand what passive sensors are, you probably ask, what does that mean for me? Now, I'm gonna give a rule of thumb here. Basically, you should always put both of them on each of your ships. The size is up to you. I usually would go with size 1 on um, ships like survey vessels, freighters, and stuff like that, at least in the beginning of the game. Eventually, as you build bigger ships, you can make your sensors, both thermal and EM, bigger and bigger. Then, when you probably, eventually, you know, that's up to you, get to things like uh, long-range scouts or cloak chips, Thermal sensors and EM sensors will become your number one friend because, as you understand, it's passive. Whatever you detect has no idea that you detected it and if you make your own EM and thermal signature low but have a very high sensor rate, you can basically sneak to any place you wish and stay there. If your ship is of a small size, not even active sensors will be then able to detect you. Now, we'll have to look at a bit of a math here. How does this work? Because the game does not really give you much information on the screen. You have thermal sensor sensitivity technology that uh, governs the thermal sensor, uh, thermal sensor efficiency. Then you have total sensor size and you have electronic hardening. If you watched my previous video on active sensors, you probably already know what electronic hardening is. And that's basically the resistance against uh, electronic warfare. Now, the thermal sensor has only one statistic that is actually very useful for you, and that's thermal sensor sensitivity. Uh, this sensitivity goes up by logical margins. At size 1, it uses 5. At size 2, it will have 10. At size 3, it will have 15, and so on. You probably understand that easily. If you get thermal sensitivity 6, you wouldn't really be surprised that the total sensor size of 4 with sensitivity 6 will have, surprise surprise, 24 sensitivity. Now, this number alone is enough for you to have a perfect idea about what you will detect at what range. How? Well, let me show you. I have a handy table here that is uh, copied from Aurora Forex Wiki because I can never really remember uh, the actual examples that are given here. But the detection distance of any object equals sensitivity, which is this, times signature strength, which is the target's signature strength, times 1000 kilometers. So, for example, if we had a sensor, let's go with some nice number, so let's go with size 10. Okay, so we have a total sensor size 10 at sensitivity 5. This could be easily built in the very beginning. The hull size will be 10, which means it's a 500 ton sensor. And you would want to know at what range you would detect, for example, let's go with a 4000 ton frigate. Um, the estimated signature here for thermal is 123 would have 352 without thermal reduction tech um 
Okay, let's go with 352. It's a starting enemy frigate, okay? So it has a signature of 352. So you get sensitivity of 50 times 352 times 1000 kilometers. Now we're gonna get our calculator here to help with this. And here 50 times 352 times 1000. That gives you the idea that you would detect a ship like this with your passive thermal sensor at 17,600,000 kilometers. So that's a decent, decent outcome. Even if you had a sensor of, say, size 1, which is 50 tons, you would have, what was it, 300... 352 times 5 times 1,000, you would have 1,760,000 kilometers worth of range when you detect it. So that's pretty decent. This number doesn't seem all that nice when we look, for example, at size 4 missile, which has a signature strength of 8, because then you would have 5 times 8 times... 1,000. So you would detect a size 4 missile 40,000 kilometers before hitting you. This is something that almost any missile can travel within the 5 second increment. So yeah, doesn't really help all that much against missiles, at least in the beginning. But as your thermal sensor sensitivity will go up and you will have a better and bigger sensors, you can get to insane numbers. Uh, the same missile would be detected by a satellite that would be, for example, somewhere at very high orbit of some kind of planet where you don't have deep space tracking station, 2,500 ton sensor, remember. And let's ignore this number. We'll pretend like that there's 10, okay? So that would give us a thermal sensor with sensitivity of 500. So you would have 500 times 8 times 1000. So you would detect the missile at a range of 4 million, which is way better. And that is a size 4 missile, which is a very small missile. Trust me, that's basically an anti-missile missile. So this is something that can become really handy. And plus, that missile or whatever fire date will not detect you in turn. If you have an active sensor, which you need, for example, to log in on this missile that is coming to you, uh, you would be immediately detected by something because the strength of your active sensor lock would be so big that most of the uh, most of EM sensors would be able to detect you. That's another thing I should mention. What does raise your thermal signature? Well, basically, it's engines. There's not much else um, that raises. I believe that some of your components uh, raise it as well, but mostly it's engines. So engines are the main source, and that is why uh, thermal reduction is so useful. Because any listening post around the system that has a thermal uh, sensor will pick you up if you have way higher thermal signature. You can, thank God, see your thermal signature during the design phase of every ship. So you can tweak it. It's a good idea to watch it and not go too overboard with it because then you're basically a beacon for any kind of enemy vessel. Now, as far as EM sensors go, it works exactly the same but with EM signature. Where do we have EM detection sensor? Voila, it works exactly the same. So if you understand this, what increases EM signature? Well, here it's uh, a bit more components. First of all, it's uh, shields when you develop them. And second of all, it's active sensors. Having active sensors and shields on your ship is a bit unlucky when you have a very strong EM sensor present in the system. However, the beautiful thing on both active sensors and shields is 
that they can be turned off. So now you understand what the beauty of passive sensors is. If you haven't guessed, I'm gonna spell it out loud. If you have a wide enough EM sensor and thermal sensor net, any enemy ship that will come to your space will be immediately picked by your sensors and you can track it without it knowing that you can see it. And once you move all your forces into the right positions, you can activate your active sensors, lock at it and start firing without it having any chance to know that you are coming. Now, one thing that I haven't mentioned in the previous video is the information that you are given by active sensors, or I think I haven't mentioned it. Active sensors, when they have a lock, a positive lock, will give you an estimated size of target in tons. I consider that the probably biggest piece of information that you can get from sensors. It will get more accurate as long as you hold your lock on the target. I believe that you get like estimated target size 8,000 tons, then it will go to 8,300, 8,320. Well, 20, no, but 8,350, for example. That way you can easily see um, what that ship probably is and guess what it does. EM and thermal sensors only give you the strength of the respective target signature. So you will, for example, learn that there is a ship with a thermal signature of 300, but you will not know whether it is a battle cruiser with very high thermal reduction on its huge massive engines or if it's actually a very small fighter that is going way overboard on the engine modifiers and basically blasting out plasma into space so but you know each each has its own bonuses and each has to be used in moderation for me active sensors should be present on almost all ships that are capable of it, actually every kind of ship is capable of having some kind of active sensor. I forgot to mention it in the previous video, but size one active sensor can be put even on commercial ships, so bear that in mind. But EM sensors and thermal sensors should be in some form put, in my opinion, on every single ship. There is absolutely no reason why not to. Hell, you can put a size 2 or 5 on every ship. 100 tons, 250 tons, that's nothing in the overall grand scheme of things. And it can save your butt later on. Now, before I end up this episode, I wanted to show you one more thing. And that is your deep space tracking stations. Now, you probably are aware that there's a sensor panel here. The sensor panel is used to show you the range of your passive deep space tracking stations. The passive deep space tracking stations have their strength here in the summary. You can find it up here and it shows you the strength. Do you remember the EM and thermal strength of passive sensors? Yes, your deep space tracking stations have this much of strength. And this is with very low level. You can upgrade it through research to go into insane amounts. Now here, you can decide on how strong that signal that is coming to you is going to be. So for example, if we used that previous example and have a size 4 missile with a strength of 8. Can I write in here? I think I can't. And um, that doesn't work well. So let's see, it's gonna be size let's get some even number here i said even number oh my god <laughs> okay we'll have a size this would be size nine let's imagine that's a size nine missile coming at you so as we have a strength thousand deep space tracking stations on earth you can easily calculate that it will be 17 times thousand which is our signal strength times ten thousand and 
the range the game gives us is 17 million kilometers. So that's exactly what it should be. Now, if you look at something more strong, say 272, which could be, or 310, which would be a frigate that we used in our example before, you would detect it at this huge distance. When we look at what this is, it's about 310 million kilometers or something around it, 310.5. Now, this brings me to the last topic that I wanted to mention. This is not a part of the tutorial, but if you are still listening, I would give you a little recommendation that more experienced players gave me. If you keep building tracking stations on Earth and get to size 20, 25, maybe 30, and you research more and more into the deep space tracking sensor strength, you will eventually end up with numbers that are basically so high that you cover up the entire solar system and you can detect anything. This is highly unrealistic and one of the weaknesses of Aurora where you can basically abuse it to a certain degree. So they gave me a good advice that I'm following since then that I never ever built more than five deep space tracking stations at one place. This goes with the logic that you cannot detect a size 1 missile going hundreds of millions of kilometers away from Earth. It's impossible in the way physics work. It's the same as if you tried to detect a smell of rose with your nose that's on the other side of a town like New York. It's basically impossible due to background radiation, due to solar flares and stuff like that. Uh, it's up to you, really. You can do it. There's no ban on that. The game will allow you to have a size million if you invest enough. Well, actually, I never saw that before, but you, know, you can easily have 50 tracking stations on your planet. And you will basically be so strong that no one will be able to sneak up on you. However, my recommendation is that if you want to make the game a bit harder for yourself, do this. And plus, no one stops you from having numerous tracking stations around the solar system. You know, it's just a thing that I would recommend. So yeah, if there are any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer them. If there are not, we are going to move to the next tutorial.